somebody you and like like what some of those big time big moments like do, is the market down right now or is it up you know, i just give you just kick you off with that oh uh, man visually the market is up right so if you're looking at uh well i say up from where it was two or three months ago uh you know the you know, overall prices are going up. And a lot of that's driven by um, expectations. You know, we expect um, a vaccine. So, you know, like you were saying earlier, uh, a lot of these companies are in phase whatever, um, and they've got testing for vaccines, right? And so we hear that information and we'll assume our, the, 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 uh, the economy is gonna go back to where it was, right? So. Uh, that fuels a lot of the movement in the market right now, and that movement is in a positive direction. Uh, another thing that's kind of moving uh, the needle on that is the government dumping a lot of stimulus money into the economy. Uh, and so when you dump that money, you're giving people funds to spend. Um, you're giving companies uh, funds to spend, whether it's to keep employees, whether it's keep the doors open, whether it's keep operations going. And so it gives the uh, the overall look that we're operating as normal, right? Payrolls are still the same. Payrolls come in the same. Uh, companies, you know, whether they, you know, they don't have to close their doors just yet. You know, they take, take the money from federal government. And so that gets extended. The time uh, from the, the, the moment in which they will have to start closing doors or have to kind of reduce workforce gets extended. And so from the outside looking in, if you're looking at the market, the way the market has been reacting to that is in a positive direction. I, you know, my overall kind of uh, standpoint on the market right now is that we're in a, a time where the market doesn't represent the economy, all right? So you have the market, then you have the economy. The market is going up because of the perception that things will get good, get better, all right? Uh, but the economy is not that way, right? There's layoffs around the door. There's cutoffs for uh, additions and unemployment. Uh, you know, people who accepted the CARES Act uh, in a, in a couple of months, they will no longer have to carry those employees that they agreed to carry uh, by accepting those funds. So they will get laid off or furloughed. So when you look at the economy, the economy doesn't resemble the market, uh, in my opinion. Uh, the, the market resembles what people anticipation or expecta expectations of the economy may be. But as of right now, uh, the market is up. Uh, but I don't, you know, just being in where I am as far as my profession and where I came from, uh, you know, there were, there were a lot of uh, cuts on the project sides. I mean, we're talking 80 to 90 percent of our budget was being cut. So, wow. Wow. yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting time um, when you when you compare the market and look at where it's going now versus where we are as an economy. I don't know so, that answers your question, but. So are you more of a, your strategy right now going forward, are you more, um, you, you invest in short term or you're doing more long-term long investments? So I shifted uh, my train of thought. I'm, I'm doing more more long-term now. Um, when I say long-term, I mean, I'm, I'm buying more stocks. Um, buying some of those companies that really got distressed and whose prices were, were dumped during this, uh, this time with COVID and, and layoffs and cutbacks and, and things like that. So, um, you know, I've, I've shifted, you know, I used to do a lot of short-term investing. Um, I used to trade options, um, which were short-term options, which, which um, you know, we could talk about, mm -hmm. uh, but I used to trade on a short-term. So now I've kind of shifted it over to long-term. So I buy more shares of companies, you know, as I get paid every, uh, two weeks, I'll take a portion of that and buy companies. Right? And so as I started by companies, um, my thinking and doing my analysis and looking at the, uh, the fundamentals of the company, I'm expecting these, these companies to recover. 
So these aren't, uh, I'm not rolling in a dice on uh, penny companies or companies that haven't been around a while or companies that haven't proven themselves. These are companies that were either once blue chip or have a strong financial, uh, strong financial statements. Uh, and, but they've just been a victim of what's going on right now. And so uh, purchasing those securities and those shares and just kind of holding on to them and waiting for, you know, recovery. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about as a trader, you know, you say long-term, are you, first of all, or when you say long-term, is this like a six month deal, three month deal, uh, year long, year and a half? Like what is your exit strategy when it comes to that? And then two, like when you, how are you going about finding these bargain basement, um, you know, what you call blue chips or bargain basement companies to, to, to kind of invest in. Because like as a trader for myself, I would probably go into the app. You know, I'll probably think about the companies that I know off the top of my head, like Facebook or Google, but you know, these companies are, have been around, they, they have success and you know, they're going to continue to be here, but they're, they're still trading at a high dollar. But how do you find those, you know, $10 or $12 or something under $50 type bargain type blue chip companies? How do you go about finding those things? Um, so I guess answer your first question, what do I consider long-term? Um, you know, I'm looking at more of the recovery of the stock versus a time frame. You know, typically if you say long-term, you're, you're talking at least a year that will get you over that, uh, you know, paying capital gains tax, right? So if you hold something for 365 days, you can kind of skate that, that, uh, capital gains tax. Uh, and so I guess I start out there with the year, um, but there's not really a time frame when I'm, when I'm purchasing these companies, you know, I'm, you know, I take money that I'm, that I would typically put in a savings account or store away, um, and then just buy stock and I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. All right. So it's a waiting game. Um, it's, you know, buying stock and investing in companies. It's just like uh, real estate, right? you you'll never lose in real estate. Um, if you don't have to still sell before you want to. And so if you purchase these stocks at distress levels at uh, really low discounted prices and you, you don't need the money, um, you just kind of let it sit there until it recovers till you get uh, either, you know, I'll look at it and kind of determine uh, what does a full recovery look like and can it come out of into a full recovery, whether it's pre COVID or pre five years ago, uh, and if it took a dip for some other reason. So um, I kind of look at um, over the last five or 10 years, see what has happened. Uh, a lot of what has happened because of COVID. So I'll start there. I'll say, I'm gonna buy these shares and I want to at least get to the mark where it was uh, pre-COVID. So that that's kind of my thinking as far as purchasing it long-term. Now, I say that if I wake up the next morning and, and the levels are pre-COVID, I may sell. So uh, like I said, there's no, I don't have really have a, uh, a time frame when I say long-term, uh, but I guess for me, when I say long-term, I'm buying shares versus, uh, you know, dealing in the options. Uh, and so yeah, I'll, I'll hold them until I get to, um, you know, the number that I, that I want to get to. Um, yeah. Like I see, I see, you know, I've been, you know, just dibbling, dabbling in it. I know I kind of, when I first got in it, you know, I was just buy some stocks or random stocks and then all of a sudden it'll go up or I buy it in, in the morning and I go to work or do something and the next hour is, is down and I lose money. And so, you know, I, when, the, when COVID-19 hit, I basically said, all right, I had bought some Snapchat because I was like, all right, Snapchat is going, it's dirt cheap right now. I know it, it was a pretty good company. I know it struggled for a little bit and I just bought some and just let it set. And of course I didn't check it. I wasn't really on it. Cause I don't, I was, like I said, I wasn't really, you know, into the stocks like that, like heavy, not paying attention a lot. And I go and open it up one day and I'm like, whoa, whoa, like what happened? And so it goes from $6 and it's up to 20 something dollars. And I see, I see what you're saying, like holding on to it. And because, you know, I, I'm thinking about when you're saying trade, I'm thinking about you get in, get out, get in, get out, get in and get out. But when you, you know, you're holding it more long term, you can kind of see that, that your investment kind of grows a little bit, you know, yeah. and we'll take a step, take a step back for people who. Probably